Hello and welcome to Genre Chat. I'm Sherry Limbis Bono, your host. This week we have a funny man. Well, he talks, he's talking to us about humor and he's going to tell us the difference between being humorous and being funny. There is a little bit of a difference. Yeah. I want to welcome to Genre Chat, Carlton Hughes. Carlton, tell us about yourself. Hi, Sherilyn. It's great to be with you and all Hi. you genre people out there. It's amazing. Um, I'm Carlton Hughes, and I met many, probably many people who are listening at writers' conferences. And uh, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I am a actually a community college professor, and I teach communication and journalism. And uh, a few weeks ago, I was asked to share my writing journey on a friend of mine's blog, and so I'll talk a little bit about my my past. Uh, when I was um, 13 years old in the eighth grade, uh, I went to a very small high school in rural Kentucky, and the junior high and the high school were both in the same building. And so when I was in eighth grade, they assigned uh, the high, one of the high school English teachers to come upstairs to the junior high to teach my English class. And we were a little bit scared, what is this guy going to do, and so on. Uh, but it turns out he and I made a connection, and he really saw something in me. He saw that I had some talent in writing. He saw that um, I knew the mechanics and I really, I point back to him to this day, and that's been many, many years ago, uh, that I know the mechanics of writing and where to put the commas and the semicolons and so on because of him. And so he invited me to write for the student newspaper, the high school newspaper, and I did. And uh, like I said, the ink got in my blood and I've never been the same since. And so uh, that first byline was, I was addicted. I, I want to write and I want people to read what I'm writing. And so that carried all the way through high school. I stayed with that same teacher uh, through high school, was an editor of the student newspaper for years. Uh, then I went off to college and I went into broadcasting and print journalism. I was a double major and I went four years, still did writing. I wrote for the mm -hmm. college newspaper, I wrote for the broadcast um, facility there. I did PR work, you name it. And then I graduated thinking I was going to enter the world, the wide world of news, and I was going to be a newscaster. And it was going to be wonderful. And the phone didn't ring. Nobody, nobody wanted me. And so I went to graduate school. And I tell students, graduate school will really kick your writing into gear. Uh, you write all the time. And there were computers back then, but I couldn't afford one. So I was knocking out 20 page research papers on a manual typewriter. Wow. You young people Google that, you know, if you don't know what that is. <laughs> and, uh, I have my, my husband just got his father's uh, manual typewriter and uh -huh. put it in my office. It's, I think it's from the seventies. So right, yeah, yeah. And before the electric ones came out, boy, your fingertips got really, got a lot of exercise. Right, I mean, mine was from the eighties, but I still, it was just a regular manual. It wasn't electric or anything, so. So I'm sorry, I interrupted, continue. That's fine, that's fine, no problem. And so uh, I really did a lot of writing and then um, I was steered toward a career in education. And so I got a job as a professor um, small college in West Virginia Then I moved here to Kentucky, the college I'm at now. And, uh, but writing was kind of put on the back burner for a while. I, I didn't really do a lot of it. Although I had a friend who worked for the local newspaper. And so he invited me to be a columnist. And so I was a newspaper oh. columnist for several years and it's pretty much, it was pretty much a humor column, a humor, humorous <laughs> look at life. I said, if Dave Barry and Irma Bachbeck had a baby, it would have been me and it would have been my, <laughs> my writing. And so uh, I did that for a few years and then I got married and I had kids and life happened in a big way. And so I kind of gave that up for a while. And then um, fast forward a few years into midlife, I gave my life to Christ. I became a Christian. And that's mm -hmm. when God really started stirring that gift. And, and God said, I want you to write. And I remember one particular night, uh, my wife was going to sit with her grandmother who was ill. And I had my, my boys who were very young, put them to bed. And I was getting ready to turn off our computer. And I really felt the spirit saying, sit down and write. Mm -hmm. And I said, write what? You know, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, All right, what do you mean? And so uh, I did sit down and there, I actually had a story on my heart at the time and I just started writing and I wrote for weeks and weeks and months on end. And uh, after a period, probably of about four or five months, I felt like I had written the great American novel that was gonna be the next bestseller. 
Mm -hmm. but I didn't know what to do with it. And so I just kind of got on Mr. Google and got to looking and I found Kentucky Christian Writers Conference. And, uh, and I read, did some reading and felt like they could help me. And so I paid the money and I went and it was a, um, it was a life changing experience. I would say as far as writing goes, uh, I met people like me who listen to the voices in their head and actually write it down. You know, and, and, and there are lots of us out there. Um, yep. And, and so I met some like-minded people and I always tell the story. I met the, the big editor at that conference was an editor for Thomas Nelson. Wow. Yeah. We're talking big time, you know, Thomas Nelson. And he and I were the same age, had similar families. We just connected on a personal mm -hmm. level. We would sit at lunch together. We hung out at the hotel together. And when it was, and, and I took my, I had printed out my manuscript. People don't do this. I had, I'm warning you. I'd printed out my manuscript, put it in a big blue binder. And um, I have a friend, Jan Watson, who writes wonderful fiction. I love talks, Jim. Yeah, yeah, she's wonderful. And she talks about how she carried her baby to her first conference. And so I had my baby in a big blue <laughs> binder. And I just knew that somebody was going to buy it. And the next year I would return to the conference and I'd be the keynote and I'd be signing books. And Isn't that the way it happens? And that's the way it happens, of course. And so, <laughs> but it was a miracle that Thomas Nelson editor agreed to take my big blue binder home with him and read my book, oh. which was a miracle. Okay. You gave your baby up. I gave my baby up. <laughs> and then two months later, he lost his job with Thomas Nelson and oh. the downsizing that went on. But he liked but, it. Yeah, yeah. But he liked it. And more importantly, I gained a lifelong friend. He and I are still friends. We talk mm -hmm. on the phone. We've met in person several times uh, after that. And so I always tell people, you may not get exactly what you want published right then and there, but you will gain friends and networking, and it's very important. And so from there, um, I decided I wanted to go to Blue Ridge Mountain Writers Conference. It's been about seven years ago, and I made wonderful connections there. I made met Sherilyn at, at Blue Ridge, uh, Kyle Young, who we all know who's now my, my agent, and uh, I made a lot of connections and I've been published a lot of times based on connections that I made there at Blue Ridge. Um, and I'll tell one more story and then I'll shut up and let Sherilyn ask me a question. But, um, no, keep going because you're okay. answering a lot of the questions. It, okay, good. So uh, it was about two years ago at Blue Ridge. It was the very last session. It was the last keynote. We were getting ready almost to go home. It was the last night. It was the banquet night. And uh, Ramona Richards, wonderful editor and writer, got up and said, I just got an email from a friend of mine at Worthy Publishing. She is looking for devotionals. They're doing a devotional book on God and nature, finding God in nature. Mm -hmm. And stop by my table, get the information, and she really wants writers here to submit something. Okay. Now, normally in my early days of writers conferences, I would have just said, forget that. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to do that. But something inside me said go. And so I got the information. I went back to my room uh, at Blue Ridge. I typed uh, a little thing. And you have to know me, I am not a nature person at all. I'm, an, I'm not a nature person at all. I do not hunt. I do not fish. I go camping when there's air conditioning involved. That's, that's, that's about it. Uh, but God really laid it. God, God really laid a story on my heart. He's like, well, you could write about, you know, such and such. And so I did, and I got accepted by yeah. Worthy, and, and I got a contract to do 10 devotionals in that book, uh, which later became Let the Earth Rejoice, which just released recently and is available at all outlets, and you need to buy it and read my stuff. <laughs> but anyway, and, uh, and but it's funny, Pamela Clements was the editor there, and I... Um, the first devotional I sat down and wrote as part of that 10 devotional contract, I was a little unsure of myself and I was wondering, is this really what she wants? And I'd written about my dog, you know, dogs are part of nature. And so I'd written about my dog and I wrote, I, I wrote it. I sent it to her. I said, could you look this over? Could you tell me if this is what you want? She wrote back and she said, it's wonderful. And she said, I'm getting ready to pitch a devotional book about dogs. <laughs> could I hold this and use this as part of my pitch? And I said, well, of course, yeah. And uh, she did. And so I ended up being a part of, and I actually happened to have a copy. So God made a dog. Aww. And I ended, up, I ended up getting a contract 
I have five devotionals in that book. And then she actually had another editor in house who was looking for an material for another devotional book. And I've since done two with that other editor. And so wow. what I say is you just really have to be open to God. You know, that, that big best-selling novel has not been published yet, but God has opened a lot of other doors. And I so, want to ask you, I want to ask you, Carlton, you're not a nature man. So how did you do 10 devotionals in a nature <laughs> devotion book? I mean, because some people yeah. will say that yeah. I, I really believe that writers need to know, mm -hmm. say yes. Yes, so yes, that's right. You know, happened. yes, Kyle Young, you know, our a agent says never say no. And so I didn't say no. Uh, it was interesting. I said yes. And I, and I really didn't know. I had no idea what I was going to write about. No idea. And so I, I did a lot of prayer. I mean, that'll really get you close to God when you don't know what you're writing about. And you've got a <laughs> deadline. <laughs> you know, you'll get close to God. And so God continually brought things to me. And, and I, my devotions in that book are not traditional. They're not I was out hunting and this happened, or I was out fishing and this happened. Um, I wrote about driving um, across the mountain where I live and noticing the clouds. I wrote about, I wrote one devotional about getting by, I was on the mountain where I live trying to get home and I got behind this huge truck and I couldn't pass. Now. Oh, don't you hate that. <laughs> that. But, but God led me to think about, you know, when I was, experiencing that God led me just enjoy the journey just enjoy the scenery mm -hmm. you don't have to be in a rush all the time so I wrote about that so mm -hmm. I, I wrote just things like that 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 were I wrote about being stuck in the rain you know and, and God raining on me and so on so just because you think you're not into that type of thing or you can't do that God will lead you to the right stories everybody has a story everybody has a kajillion stories it's just finding the right ones for that project. So that's a good question because yeah, I'm not a nature person, but God did it. And I told some, what I thought were some good stories. So how did you get into humor? I, I, I can tell that you just have a sense of humor anyway, and you look at life. Well, it, it, oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm a really goofy guy. Anyway, this is my son's platypus hat. <laughs> Perry the platypus. We love yeah, that. Show. Um, I, I think I've, I've been um, into humor. If you've known me any length of time, you know how I am. I see the humor in almost anything. And mm. so uh, it's just been part of the fabric of who I am. I have another prop here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I love oh, Lucy. I love Lucy, yes. <laughs> and so grow, growing up, I, I loved I love Lucy. I love the comedies. You know, I watched those incessantly growing up. I'm an only child. So I had to create my own world, <laughs> you know, I had, I had to do that. Uh, but beyond that, I'm from a huge extended family that's very humorous. My mother's side of the family, they're all funny and raucous. And we have a family reunion every year. And if you come, you'll get hugged by seven or eight people before they even know who you are. <laughs> that's just the way we I are. I love that. <laughs> and, and, then, and then my father's side of the family, good humor too, a little bit different, a little bit sly and witty and so on. So I think I'm a product. Of, of that and I've just I've always loved always loved humor reading humor um, watching it on television it's always been part of who I am and when I first uh, when God first started stirring the gift well even before that when I was doing the newspaper column that just seemed to be what was natural to me it just seemed to be to look at funny look at things in life from that funny lens and that observational lens that this is crazy for example uh, when I first started the college where I work uh, and I was writing that newspaper column, my office, they placed me in an office that was in the game room behind the ping pong table. <laughs> now, is that humorous or what? You know, <laughs> is that, is that humor? uh, God gives me material is, is all I can say. And so just finding the funny, you know, find, that's, that's kind of my tagline is finding the funny in life. And, and, I, and, and, I and like, sometimes we have to try to find the funny. Now, right. what's the greatest lesson that you've learned in writing humor beside finding the funny in life? Um, I'll quote Lucy again. I, I love Lucy. Um, Lucy was quoted as saying, I'm not funny, I'm brave. Ah. And, and that's such a profound statement. And, and what she meant by that is she, she would do whatever it took to get the laugh. She didn't care if it was 
rolling in grapes or, you know, being in a freezer or whatever she would do it. And so I think that's it. I think I learned. And plus another thing about me that I didn't mention in my background, I'm the children's pastor at my church. Oh yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have humor when you're but, a children's yeah. pastor. Buddy, you better have some humor when you're those kids. And so, so that's it. And so when I first started, when God first started starting that gift, it was primarily for my children's church. It was, I wrote a lot of plays and I wrote skits mm -hmm. and so on. And I would constantly write things and I would say, God, do you really want me to do this? Should I do this? And, and God said, go for it. And so I did a lot of things that you would normally never find uh, um, on, a, on, a, on a children's church stage. And so, so I, think, I think it's just being brave enough to speak the truth and to, to call it like you see it. And, and that the humor is going to grow out of that. Humor is going to grow out of that. Now, you write a column for almost an author. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yes. Um, again, Blue Ridge Christian Writers Conference, Blue Ridge Mountains Christian Writers Conference. I said we need a few more words in that title. It's not <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, at Blue Ridge, as I like to call it, I met Kyle Young, uh, mm -hmm. who we know, a, agent with Heartline and, you know, all this. And... Um, he and I were at the conference and then actually communicated with each other after the conference. He said, I've got this idea and I want to do almost an author. And it's for those of us who maybe haven't had that big publishing moment yet, but we're trying and we're talented. And so um, I, I said, yes, um, I'm thinking, do it, you know, do I have the time and I do have uh, the, can I come up mm. with something every month, but it always comes, you know, I haven't missed a month yet and been doing it ever so since. Give us, give us an example of one of your, of one of, of one of your um, articles. Okay. Um, actually, I'll, I'll do two. Is that okay? That's perfect. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. One of my most popular articles, one of my most viewed articles is about the coconut macaroon cookies at Blue Ridge. <laughs> Christian Writers Conference, okay? And I'm it. laughing already because I read it, but <laughs> if someone says a coconut macaroon cookie, there's really nothing funny about it. Right. What is, what is but funny? But you made it funny, so continue. <laughs> and so, um, and so, and what happened was, first of all, the first time I went to Blue Ridge, I fell in love with those cookies. If you haven't eaten them, I said it's like a cross between a Mounds Bar and a Brownie and Manna is, is what they're like. They're just, they're wonderful. And we fell in love with them. And so I was sitting at the conference with two friends of mine. Uh, I'll say their names, Cynthia Lovely and Connie Clobber, and they're regulars at Blue Ridge, wonderful ladies. And I, I'd known Cynthia, and I was getting to know Connie, and we were, we were bemoaning the fact that it was the next to last day of the conference, and they still hadn't put out the macarons. We were just, <laughs> we were getting serious about it. We were going to complain. You know, we really are serious about our macarons. And then this lady came. She was late to lunch because she had had an editor appointment and she asked if she could sit down with us and we all looked at her plate and she had macaroons <laughs> and we're like where did you get those and she said they're just putting them out so connie cynthia and i both got up at the same movement a moment and ran <laughs> back into the food area and we looked at the poor little lady who was working and said, where are the macaroons <laughs> and she had this deer in the head like look and she said here take some so we all mounded them up because if you're a really if you're a coconut macaroon fan you carry ziplocs with you at blue ridge and you sneak those babies back to your room and you eat them or you take them home or anything i'm serious we're serious about them we're serious about them and so and so we once we sat down we were like isn't that goofy that we're just so crazy about macaroons but i was able to write about how that's part of the experience at Blue Ridge, not just the macaroons, but that bond that you make with mm. people. That's really the most important thing, I think, about a writer's conference is you make friends, you make connections, mm. you bond. Even if it's over coconut macaroon, you know, it's still a bond, it's still a connection. And so that, that was one of my most popular ones. Richard Mabry, great writer, commented on that. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, wow. And then my other, my other one, when I got home from Blue Ridge last year, I wrote about um, Davis Bunn. Davis mm -hmm. Bunn who was one of the keynotes and gave a fabulous keynote. Gave a fabulous keynote. And uh, Davis Bunn, multi published author, international bestseller. And when he got up and he gave his uh, story and he told his story and he gave his keynote, he was right in my Kool Aid. <laughs> he was right in my Kool Aid. He perfectly <laughs> described what I had been going through 
that semester, I'm a teacher, we deal with semesters, mm -hmm. but anyway, what I had been going through with my job and with everything that was going on last year, he was, he was right there. He was right there. And so I knew I wanted to write about it to the point that I stalked him and got a picture with him because I knew I wanted to put the picture on, <laughs> on the blog. <laughs> That's how I am. But, and so I came up with the idea of Davis Bunn has been looking in my windows. You know, the old thing, somebody's been looking in my windows. And so I, I juxtaposed the serious part of it with, okay, Davis is standing there and he's standing on my flowers and he is, uh, I'm going to give him some Windex because while he's there, he might as well clean the windows, you know, and so on and tried to juxtapose it there because I think a lot of people related to that. I think his story mm -hmm. was very relatable, but still having those little funny breaks in there. And so the, that's two, you know, the, the macaroon one was just sheer fun and talking about a crazy thing. The, but Davis Bunn was kind of serious, broken up with some funny stuff. And so that tends to be how I write it. So can you give us the difference between humor and being funny? And is there, can you cross the line in humor? I, I think you certainly can cross the line. And that's one thing that I kept asking myself with the Davis Bunn thing is that I don't want to cross the line. And I think I had, I had a line and Davis Bunn, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I had a line that I cut that talked about how tall he is, and I imagined he wore like size 17 shoes, you know, <laughs> he's such a tall guy, and I ended up cutting that because I thought maybe that's a little too far over the line, and so I think you just have to rely on your instincts, and the, certainly the Holy Spirit, you know, for writing on the Christian side um, to do that. I would say that there's a difference. I, I look at humor versus being witty you know and I, and I think there is a lot of being funny or humorous and being witty and you know being witty is finding the little twist of a phrase finding a little thing I think the Davis Bunn article was witty you know I think you know find you know Davis Bunn looking in my windows and cleaning mm -hmm. my windows and so on that was a little more on the witty side whereas the macaroon telling that macaroon story was just fun it was just a funny story mm -hmm. and just just doing that and so I think I think sometimes you walk that line you know you're going to be is this just going to be a totally funny story or is this going to be something that i'm just going to inject some wit into and that's it. another one that i wrote about uh on a3 i think this might have been even the first one that i ever wrote was about um one of my first editor appointments at blue ridge and it was in this big room with a bunch of doors and the, it went very well and i thought the editor really liked me and so I stood up and I opened the door and I thought I was walking the hallway and I walked into a closet full of tables. <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking, okay, there's people out there watching me. What is he doing with the tables? And, and, you know, and so I had to very discreetly come out of the closet with tables and move to the right door. <laughs> oh, no. And, and, and did and they laugh just, at you? Uh, what? Did, did I'm they sure laugh? there were people in the room that laughed at me. I don't, the editor was already on to his next appointment by then. Thank oh. God. <laughs> okay. but um but that's just a funny thing that happened to me and and i used it to make a point about not taking yourself so seriously yes you know, things are going to happen and it's okay it's going to be okay and so isn't that, um, isn't that part of writing humor though carlton is not taking yourself and everything so exactly. seriously exactly. Even, now what is what's the most serious thing that you've ever encountered that you found humor in i know i can find humor in some really serious things right mm -hmm. um yep. it's i don't laugh at the situation i laugh in spite of the situation right. but yeah. Yeah. what's the most what's the most serious thing that you found humor in and what was the humor how did you uh, how did you write about it or how did you express that well first of all i mentioned my big family and we tend to have really a lot of fun and laugh at funerals. I don't know what it is. You know, just, I guess it's releasing the tension. We, you know, we talk yeah. about times and, and, you know, so like that. Um, I actually wrote about a time at Kentucky Christian Writers Conference where I got choked and it was pretty, you know, I was, <laughs> you know, and it was so bad that a guy asked if he could do the Heimlich on me. I mean, that's how, that's how bad it was. And um, you were choking on it something or I was choking on a peanut okay. <laughs> I was choking on a peanut and okay, so, so you were literally choking life or death situation 
obviously I didn't die, which is a good thing. But, but and you're not allergic to peanuts. I'm not allergic to peanuts. But the whole story was I was it was at the meet and greet at the the conference, <laughs> and so I was working the room, and I and I and I stopped at the snack table because I said I'd never made a snack table that I didn't like. I always wanted. To <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. And so, and I got some peanuts, and I started choking. And at the very moment that I was hacking up a lung. They announced my name as the winner of the door prize book. <laughs> <laughs> and so here I was coughing and hacking. Oh I had to accept the book. And then the guy who wrote the book was there. He was also a college professor. He wanted to come over and chat with me while I was still hacking up a lung. <laughs> and so, and so but was, at least the peanut was out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the peanut, you know, the peanut was out there and so on. And so I was, I mean, it could have been a serious situation, you know, very much. I, I, I didn't know if I was going to stop coughing or choking, but, um, but I, I found the humor in it. You know, I found, I found the humor mm -hmm. that only this something, something wacky could happen to me, you know, that way. And so, <laughs> so that was, that was my story on that one. So do you, what advice would you give somebody uh, for them to add a little humor to their writing? Um, I think humor is a lot of observation and a lot of, of digging. Sometimes you got to dig a little bit deeper and find the humor mm -hmm. in it. And so, so I think that's, that's part of it is, is what can it, like you said, there are situations in life that are so serious and so tough, but you've got to find something to laugh about you know you got to find something humor so so digging a little bit deeper and find that humor and just observation things happen in life every day you know like i said i work with children in children's church something funny happens every time um i work with in my day job i work with teenagers Woo. <laughs> can you find the humor in that so it's just finding the humor every day you know finding you those make things. it out alive every day so that's, I, I yeah, that's, that's, that's part of the game right there and so um you, you know and, and with your family and, and you know things mm -hmm. when you're with you're with your husband your, your husband or wife or your kids or something funny little things happen and so you've just got to be able to find it you know you just got to be able to find it and record it and then insert it in creative ways into your writing um at, i keep mentioning the writers conferences and those are valuable uh but at Blue Ridge, Rhonda Ray was one of the teachers and she was talking about humor. And, and, and I went to her class and what I found out was I was already doing a lot of the stuff mm. that she said to do. Uh, That's for great example, confirmation. It was, it was, yeah. For example, she said in comedy, there's a thing called a triple where you're making a list of three things and the last one is funny. Like I might say, my spiritual gifts are evangelism and teaching and eating chocolate. <laughs> you know, those, those are my, <laughs> and that's true. That's really true. <laughs> so, so those are my three things. Uh, so charismatic chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So I was already doing that, and a lot of uh, a lot of my A3 articles and a lot of other things doing that. Um, she mentioned that when you uh, are making a reference, and maybe it's to a product, using the brand name. She said for some reason it's funnier. Like I say, um, you know, if I, I said my gifts are evangelism teaching and eating oreos yeah. <laughs> you know that's, that's going to make it even funnier and people are going to relate to that so there are some things like that um also kentucky christian writers we had a, a guy who taught on humor uh buck creasy who's a wonderful writer and humorist and storyteller and so on and he was just talking about exaggeration and being imaginative you know davis bunn standing in my roses <laughs> you know was was a funny exaggeration and imaginary but people got it you know people that's probably my most read thing on a3 because that was that a3. was that yeah. was funny so yeah. we only have a few minutes now do you have a work in progress are you working on something right now sort of <laughs> i guess uh i'm still kind of uh the, that initial book the novel that i was writing is still on the burner and it's still brewing uh i actually have a proposal out there for a devotional about classic sitcoms i Ooh. mentioned i love lucy and i love you know mary tyler moore and dick van dyke and laverne and Shirley and all those classic sitcoms and so uh, my agent kyle is kind of pitching that uh right now uh we mentioned holland webb earlier wonderful guy wonderful writer hi holland 
Um, <laughs> Hi, Holland. <laughs> Hello. Um, he is very talented writer as well. Yes, he is. And he and I have worked on a proposal. I came up with an idea with Kyle's help of uh, like a fatherhood devotional. And uh, mm -hmm. we're looking at maybe fatherhood, it's not for sissies, you know, for, for example. And so Holland and I are looking at Run that together, and I apologize, Holland, for not finishing that proposal. I promise I will soon work on it. But, but anyway, <laughs> sitting there saying, "What is he doing talking to Cheryl?" And he should be writing. Uh, but so, 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 uh, so those are the projects that I'm working on now. I really, um, I never thought of myself as a devotional writer until I started working with Worthy, and so, um, and they really, that really kind of opened up some some possibilities for me that I thought that I, I like writing in that style and in that length and and i think you can make a really good point and be humorous and still you know touch somebody uh in that realm so that's kind of what i'm focusing on now and i actually just finished uh 10 devotionals for a book worthy is doing called everyday grace for men and Ooh. that's going to be out sometime in 2018 it's part of a series but it's specifically geared toward men and uh, that's going to be out sometime 2018 i'm assuming close to father's day in the summer but not sure but that but that's out there too that's wonderful now do you have any books or uh websites or places people could go um that you would suggest uh to write about humor to learn how to write more about humor wow i don't know if i <laughs> uh well if you look up Rhonda ray mm -hmm. uh, i think she's got some wonderful stuff out there and and she really like i said she really gave me like you said confirmation at Blue Ridge that I was uh, doing the right thing. Uh, somebody asked me a question similar to that not long ago, and I said, um, for me, it's watching some of those old classic sitcoms, you know, and I get inspiration from that. I don't know about other people, but, you know, I get inspiration by watching other people be funny. And, and Yeah, I like that. I don't, we love to watch America's Funniest Videos, right. but I don't find it funny when somebody gets hurt exactly i really don't exactly. i don't find that we're laughing but i don't find yeah. it funny i really don't yeah uh -huh. um, yeah i find when people are foolish that yeah. that that makes me laugh but i don't right. find that funny yeah but I, I and what you know everybody has netflix now and everybody talks about like the other day i was at work and people were talking about this new show on netflix and these crime shows on netflix and how wonderful they are and so i spoke up and i said I love the Dick Van Dyke show on Netflix. And they look at me like I was an alien or something, but. <laughs> who's uh, Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> yeah, who's that? Who is he? Ah. Uh, but that is one of the funniest, wittiest shows yes, you yes. ever see. And if you Mary haven't Tyler watched Moore it. And, and exactly. even the old Leave it to Beaver and things like right, that, yeah. they have some really fun, yeah. funny one-liners. And um, yeah. even Happy Days had a lot of funny exactly. stuff in there. Yeah. One and it was clean humor. Yeah, one of my favorites is Laverne and Shirley. It was just yes. pure humor. I Back won't then. sing the song. <laughs> Shlomio, Shlomazo. Shlomazo. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they, and I think back then sitcoms were worried about being funny. They weren't worried about maybe making a social commentary or, you know, putting in mm -hmm. bad stuff. They, were, they just wanted to be funny. They wanted to give people a laugh. And I, I think that's what I've looked at me. If I can give somebody a laugh and still make a point about God and about Jesus and, and you know, how mm -hmm. he's going to make it okay. <laughs> you know, so yes. if, if I can make that point and, and slide that in there with the humor, mm -hmm. then I've done my job. And so that's what I, that's what I look at. Amen. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, email you, um, yeah. how would they do that? Uh, I'm on Facebook. So you can find me there. Just Carlton Hughes. Uh, I do have email. Uh, it's, um, Email I primarily use for writing is carltonwhughes at gmail.com. And so Can you spell that out? Yes, yeah, C A R L T O N W H U G H E S at gmail.com. Wonderful. Uh, I'm, also, I'm, also on, I'm also on Twitter, but I am so ignorant and naive about Twitter that, you know, <laughs> good luck with me on Twitter. I may get in touch with you. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't mastered Twitter yet. And it's funny, my son who's off at college called me the other night and, and I thought he was calling to ask for money or something. He was like, I didn't know you had a Twitter. <laughs> I'm like the most unlikely man to have a Twitter. Uh, but, but anyway, so, so yeah, I'm out there. I'm out there on social media. 
Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Carlton. And everybody, you've been listening to Genre Chat. I'm Sherry Lynn Bisbano. Thank you, Carlton. Thank you, Sherilyn. Thank you.